the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The readings today offer us a pretty sharp call for conversion, for repentance, to turn away from our ways and follow more closely Jesus Christ. So for those times, conversion has been hard when repentance has been little. We call to mind our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We now lift our voices in song. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, 
you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, 
who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards, changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, amen, I say to you, Tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet, even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. There are some Gospels that are written that are pretty convoluted and difficult to understand, and then there are others like today that are pretty simple. If you're parents, I'm sure you can relate to this, and if you're kids, you can probably relate to this too. Mom or dad says, take out the trash, and the kid says, no. Well, then you're grounded. Fine, I'll take it out or take out the trash. Okay, mom, and then you don't do it. That's the gospel today. It's pretty simple, right? But Jesus, in this parable, of course, flips it around on its head. So, of course, as we think about these two sons, we can relate to it. Like I said, if you're a parent or your kid, Things are pretty simple when you're taking out the trash. But as people of faith, as people of believers, we also have to consider this in terms of our spiritual growth and development. So this father has two sons. And of course, it's important to remember that the father loves both of his sons no matter what. Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. Son says no but changes his mind later. 
I think when we think about what God asks of us, there are certain times, if not more often than not, our first response is no. You're asking the wrong person. I can't possibly pray in public. That's just too much. I'm going to get ridiculed for it. No, I can't share my money because I need it. No, I can't just give up my work schedule to go to church because I need to make money. So a lot of times our first response is no. But then maybe we change our mind later. Maybe we come to our senses. Maybe we understand that, yeah, participating in community, in communal worship is important. So we change our minds. And then we go into the vineyard. Or we're like that second son that says, yes, of course. Of course I'll do it. I'm a Christian. I go to church on Sundays. I check that obligation off on the box. Of course. I went to the Knight of Keys last night. Didn't win anything, but that's all right. I didn't either. But still, yes, I'll help out. I'll pray for people. But then that's where it stops. Only on Sunday morning, maybe Saturday night, or maybe if you really need something, then yeah, I'll, I'll get back in the God box and do something. So those are the two people that Jesus is talking about. But of course, he's addressing this parable to the scribes and the, the or I'm sorry, the chief priests and the elders. So in Matthew's gospel, right before this in chapter 21, the chief priests and the elders are getting kind of mad at Jesus because he's cured people, he's walked on water, he's come to Jerusalem, the holy city of God, and he did the unthinkable. He kicked the money changers out of the temple. Who does that? We need to make a profit. We need to sell turtle doves so that these people can sacrifice it because that's what God tells us to do. So here comes Jesus, turning over tables, making a mockery, it seems, out of what the scribes and the Pharisees and the chief priests hold dear. And so they ask Jesus, on whose authority do you do this? And so he tells them this parable. And after telling that parable we just talked about, Jesus asks them, which of the two did the Father's will? And they answered, the first one. And they're right. The chief priests and the elders aren't dumb people. They aren't the enemy that we sometimes like to put up against Jesus, Jesus versus the chief priests. They got it right. They understood the point of the parable. They could relate to it because they also had kids that wouldn't take out the garbage. So they know what it was like. But then, the kicker. Jesus holds up the mirror. Because the step that the chief priests and the elders weren't making was, you're actually talking about us, aren't you? And guess what? Today, the gospel is a mirror for us. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are getting in the kingdom of God before you. Those evil people. Hugh Hefner is getting into the kingdom of God before us. Donald Trump, the president of Planned Parenthood. Those people that we just can't possibly imagine are getting into the kingdom of God because you know what? They're sinners. Well, where's the mirror? A man had two sons. Oh. Tax collectors and prostitutes are getting in before us. When John came, when the prophets came, he was preaching to you the way of righteousness. You didn't believe him. You thought he was just full of bull. But tax collectors and prostitutes did believe him. And that's the difference. From the prophet Ezekiel, our first reading, the Lord's way is not fair. How can Hugh Hefner get into heaven? Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that's unfair or your way? And that, I think, is the point of today's readings. We spend too much time watching who's taking out the trash and who's not. 
when we're not taking out the trash either. We spend too much time thinking, well, is he following all the rules? Is she getting to church on time? Is everything happening in the way that I think God operates? Or is it something different? Is it what the psalm has to say to us today? Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Remember your mercies, O Lord. The Lord is merciful. He's a father that loves both of his children, the one that says yes and the one that says no. We don't have any clue as to what are in people's hearts. We just trust that the Lord has the ability to know himself because he's the one who created people's hearts. And so instead of watching so closely who's doing what, who's saying yes, who's saying no, just go out into the vineyard. Be that kid whom the father asks the question, are you going out to work in the vineyard today? That's your task. That's my task. It's up to the father what happens after that. So, your discipleship opportunity today is when your first response is no, do it. When your first response is yes, follow through with it. Essentially, go out and work in the vineyard. Toil next to tax collectors and prostitutes because they've believed the word of God They've had a repentant heart. They've changed their mind, even if at the last minute. Remember a couple of weeks ago, or was it last week, the gospel? People are working in the vineyard since 9 o'clock. The ones that start at 5 o'clock, they get the same pay. Shoot. They changed their minds. Are we so stuck in our ways that we can't change our minds about people? Are we so stuck in our ways that we have a preconceived notion that God, once you hit the age of three, anything else after that, you're screwed? Who's God to us? Is he the merciful father that loves both of his sons? Is he the one that's full of mercy? Is he the one whose ways are always fair, even when our ways aren't? Work in the vineyard. Work for the Lord. Praise his name. And let him deal with the rest. <laughs>